Good to see all of you here. Glad to have you with us. Welcome to our week four of our Zoom online service for First United Methodist Church in downtown Elgin. Um, we are glad to have you here with us today. We are, as we said, we, if you are, as if it's your first time here, I think all of you are, have been here before, but we are on week four of Zoom as we wrap up the, hopefully wrap up the Omicron variant uh, surge that we are experiencing. I know things are improving and getting better, but for the safety and sake of everyone involved, we have opted to go online via Zoom through next Sunday, uh, February 13th. So we will have our final Zoom service next week, and then we will, as long as things seem to be better, um, stay tuned for details. But the plan right now is to return to normal after this upcoming Sunday. So welcome. We're glad you're here. Thank you for being with us. Good morning, everyone. I'm Cindy Palm, the liturgist and lay servant here at First United Methodist Church. Let us prepare for worship. To know the warmth of love. To have the assurance that someone cares. To be confident in our worth. To be bold in love in return. To be washed over with grace. To be accepted as we are. This is to know a bit of God. Then let us worship our God. Please be with me in prayer. Spirit of love, we come in search of love and in the hope of learning how to love as you love us. Help us to see others with your eyes of love. Help us to forgive and accept forgiveness as fully and confidently as you forgive. Love us, dear Lord, with the mercy and grace we need to abide in your love each and every day. In your love and grace we pray. Amen. We come to the time in our service where if we were in person, we would be sitting together and we would hear the announcement about asking the ushers to come forward. Well, today we are each our own ushers as we consider and give back and are good stewards of the gifts that we have been given. Um, Despite the fact that we are in Zoom, the work of the church goes on. There are still the needs of the church are still there. The needs of the community are still there. So while we know things can be difficult right now, and we know it's not co the conventional way to either give online or to mail into the church, we do thank you for your faithfulness in this time, um, and we ask that you do continue to continue to give as you would. Um, if you are unsure how to do so, um, you may, of course, mail your offerings to the church, um, and then you could also go to fumcelgin.org forward slash give. That will take you directly to a page where you can enter your amount and your banking account information um, to give. And if you have a second device, you can also scan the QR code on the bottom of your screen right there. Um, that will take you directly to the website, so you can do that. So, Pray with me right now as we bless the offerings and the gifts of the congregation. Father, we thank you for these gifts and these offerings that your faithful stewards continue to provide. We thank you that you continue to bless us and that you continue to to bless the work that this church is doing, Father. Uh, we pray all this in the name of the one who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the power, kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Our sermon text this morning is from the book of Mark, chapter 12. Verses 28 through 34, I'll be reading this from the New Revised Standard Version. One of the scribes came near and heard them disputing with one another. And seeing that he answered them well, he asked him, which commandment is the first of all? Jesus answered, the first is, hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul and with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. Then the scribe said to him, you are right, teacher. You have truly said 
that he is one and besides him there is no other. And to love him with all your heart and with all the understanding and with all the strength and to love one's neighbor as oneself. This is much more important than all whole burnt offerings and sacrifices. When Jesus saw that he answered wisely, he said to him, you are not far from the kingdom of God. After that, no one dared to ask him any questions. Here ends the reading of the scripture. Today, we will be hearing from Dr. Jennifer Brooks. She is the Steiberg Preaching Professor, professor at Garrett and their Dean for the Doctor of Ministry Program. In addition, Dr. Brooks is the Dean for the Doctor of Ministry Program in teaching for the in preaching for the Association of Chicago Theological Schools, which is 13 local seminaries and theological schools in the area. She is also an accomplished writer. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce Dr. Jennifer Brooks. To the congregation of First United Methodist Church of Elgin, I greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I pray for all of you the peace that comes from knowing that whatever comes your way, whatever challenges you face in life, even COVID, nothing can separate you from God's love. Let me thank Reverend LeBoy for inviting me into her pulpit, and let me also thank Amy Dittrickson for her help in negotiating, navigating the things that I needed to do for this service. May God's peace be with us in this moment. Let us pray. Speak, Lord, your children are listening. Speak to us now the words that we need for our lives. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts be acceptable to your God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Love, a four-letter word that has so many implications. Someone once said, love covers a multitude of sins. But I confess openly that it's not a word I use very often. And I don't use it because it is used so easily to represent so many things that for me it loses a lot of its meaning. So people might say, I love brown paper bags. In the same way that they would say, I love my children. It just doesn't work well for me. But Dr. LeBoy told me that your theme for this month, beginning with today, was love. And particularly today, love God always and everywhere. So using that as my launching pad, along with the text from Mark chapter 12, I thought for a few moments we might look at the idea of intentional love. What does it mean to love God intentionally? Jesus is confronted by the scribes. Earlier in this same chapter from Mark, there are two questions put to Jesus. I won't even tell you what they were. Go look at Mark chapter 12, verses 13 to 17, and Mark chapter 12, verses 18 to 27. But here, the third question is about the commandment. Now, there are folk who think that there is an anti-Semitic flavor to some of the gospel. We're not dealing with that. But think about this. A scribe asks Jesus a question about the commandment. Now, keep in mind, the scribes are trained they have learned the Torah. They have learned the commandments. They know it. So it seems to be a trick question that they're asking. They're trying to trick Jesus, perhaps, when they ask him, what's the greatest commandment? They know. Deuteronomy says it. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your might. Seems plain enough to me. So Jesus takes that and he adds a few things to it. If you were listening well to the lesson from Mark, Jesus says, love the Lord your God with all your heart, your soul, your mind, and your strength. Just a little different. In fact, the whole sentence begins a little differently because in Deuteronomy 
it says, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is our God, the Lord alone. Mark says, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. So right away, just a little different. Does it matter? Well, not so much for us. Maybe at that time, it's not so much for us. We believe in one God, even if we're Trinitarian and we look at God as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We understand our God is one. But let's look at what Jesus says, how Jesus says we ought to love God. He begins just where the Torah begins. Love God with all your heart. So let's talk about the heart. Physically, it's an organ. The organ, some would say, without which we cannot survive. It's the organ that keeps us living. The organ that helps us to stay in our life. But the heart also does something that the ordinary person wouldn't really pay attention to, wouldn't know about. Doctors might, or maybe somebody with a heart complaint who's been dealing with doctors might. Because you see, not only does the heart keep us living, but the heart is the organ that prevents us from being damaged by those elements that are bad for us. It removes the carbon dioxide. So if you take that as an analogy, then loving God with the heart means not only affirming the beauty of life that God has ordained for us, but it also helps to prevent us from doing those things that are contrary to the love that we should be feeling for God. Now that's pretty brief, but I've got, I've got to move on. Let's move to soul. Now the soul is truly a complicated feature of the human being. It is very difficult to explain the soul. In fact, Greek philosophers such as Plato and Socrates are believed to have said that the soul was the element of the human being that was closest to the divine. For them, the soul was the essence of human existence that served a spiritual purpose, that had a direct connection to God. I put it this way. The soul is kind of like the um, umbilical cord that attaches between God and human beings, just like the umbilical cord attaches mother and child. The difference is that when a child is born, they cut the cord. They never cut the cord that connects us to God. That's our soul. Or as apostle, the Apostle Paul puts it in Romans 8, nothing, nothing can separate us from the love of God. We are connected forever. And so we turn to the mind. The mind is that aspect of human identity that I believe has the most bearing on intentionality. The mind is considered the seat of mental capacities, mental competence, such as thought, memory, perception, emotion, and will. Physically, we connect the mind with brain functionality. Through our mind, we think our thoughts. Through our mind, we make our decisions. Through our mind, we take our action. So we need our minds to be intentional about loving God. You know, it's always interesting to me, sort of saddening as well, when folk tell you about God and they describe God in a way that doesn't make any sense. You think about it and you say, huh, really? No, if we're going to love God, we've got to bring our mind into play. But then that might cause you to say, why would I love God if I don't like what I think God is doing? Why would I love God when I feel God has abandoned me? Why would I even think about loving God if God has brought evil, disease, sickness, COVID, or employment, barrenness, divorce, whatever, whatever, whatever upon us? It doesn't make sense, does it? And if you say that, I have an answer. I would ask you, have you really stopped and considered the evidence? Have you used your mind to discern what is really happening? Does it make sense? 
Have you been intentional about your relationship with God, understanding it in a way that Jesus invites you to be intentional? You see, I believe Jesus names mind third because it is subject to the heart and the soul. Let me say that again. Before you can engage your mind, your heart, that life-flowing uh, entity, has to kick in. And your soul, you have to recognize the connection between you and God, that unbreakable cord. Only then can you really begin to make everything make sense. And so that brings us to strength. Now, we generally associate the concept of strength with physicality. But one dictionary source that I consulted says, and I quote, that strength is the capacity to withstand great force or pressure. Love God with all your strength, says Jesus. Consider how much in the world there is that seems to say God is not there. God does not love you. God exists in your life only to punish you. God does not care about your existence. Loving God faithfully requires strength that can withstand the forces that comes against the reciprocity of divine and human love. Staying in love with God, which is one of the tenets of our Wesleyan heritage, requires first believing in the love of God, the love of God for us. And then putting intentional focus on loving God everywhere and every time. You see, God first loved us. We are created out of God's love. If we can get that, then we can begin to really engage our whole being, heart, soul, mind, with strength. It's not always easy. You know, this is Black History Month, Dr. LeBoy reminded me. And it calls us to consider how we as Christians have been in the past. Specifically, if I narrow it down to just the United States, Black history, and what the Christian church and how people who have named themselves Christian, who were baptized and covenanted to love God and each other, how in history, in this, these United States, they have been. Something that I learned about some years ago was the way in which persons would go to church. And then, then they would leave church and they would go have a picnic. But here's the kind of picnic they had. They picnic where people were burning black people to death. And they would sit there and enjoy the spectacle of people, living people, being set on fire. Ignore the screams. They just come out of church, mind you. And then it goes even far. The indignity is even worse. When the bodies were completely burned, these people would cut off the privates, the burned parts, as their souvenir. Christian people. So you might say that was then. Well, what about now? Now we have Christian people who are working diligently, diligently to take away the rights of so many people, their right to vote, their right to be free. We still have that going on today. It's Black History Month, so we shouldn't shy away from it. What I'm saying is that why it's easy to speak of love, because I'm sure those people will say, but I love my family. I love, you know, I love my church. Loving God all the time, everywhere, means showing that love in the way we treat and love others. It requires an intentional focus on loving God with heart, soul, mind, and strength in order to truly love God and show that love in the way we treat one another.
You know, when I looked at your website, I was pleased to note that you identified yourself as recognizing the sacred worth of all people and had made the commitment to extend love to all people as you yourself want to be loved. Those are your words. That is wonderful. And I celebrate it with you. I celebrate that you're a reconciling congregation. Nevertheless, I challenge each of you and all of you as you continue to focus on your theme of love to put legs on that love. Take a little time to investigate, interrogate, and challenge your notion and your practice of love. How does your love of God represent intentionality in engaging your heart, soul, mind, and strength as you engage with others? Are there areas where you are not really consciously or actively using any of those attributes to show love? See what you find. As they would say, grade your own paper. And if you find a lack in any way, as I did when I took the exercise, don't waste time being upset with yourself or angry with yourself. Just make the commitment to yourself and therefore to God and take steps to correct the errors. Take steps to eliminate the, gap, the gaps. Take steps to make sure that your love for God is palpable, is recognizable, has legs, as I said before, in the way you love others. You know, there's something wonderful about Jesus that I never give up on. Jesus said, I came to bring good news. And let me tell you what the good news is for today. I challenge you to take seriously your love for God. But here's the great thing. Jesus is already there filling you with love. Jesus fills our hearts with love so that we can be persons of love. You're not in this by yourself. Jesus is willing and able to give you all of the love you need. You must be intentional about talking with him. And then when he gives it to you, when you experience that sense of peace that that love brings, it becomes so easy to show that love to others. You see, when it comes to Jesus, the thing I know about him, he doesn't just ask us to do something and leave us to do it on our own. Let me say it one more time. Jesus, our Christ, our Redeemer, fills us with love so that we can be persons of love. And so, my sisters and brothers, I invite you to receive the love that comes from God. Receive the love from the God who created us, the love from Christ who redeems us, and the love from the Holy Spirit who sustains us every day. Our God is one Father, Son, Holy Spirit, Creator, Redeemer, Sustainer. Be filled with the love that God gives and go forward to live in and to live out that love for God, for everyone, always and everywhere. You can do it. Jesus fills you with love. Amen. And thanks be to God. Let us pray. Loving and gracious God, we give you thanks and pray for the love that you have already poured into our hearts. Merciful God, your love fills us even when we are unaware of it or we do not acknowledge it. We confess that there is so much that is unlovely in our world. And at times we find ourselves willingly or unintentionally being a part of the systems and behaviors that are contrary to the love that you have placed in us. Forgive us our unlovely ways, O oh God. Forgive us for our indifference. Forgive us for our collusion in systems that deny the fullness of your love to everyone. Gracious God, imbue our hearts and souls and minds with overflowing love. And give us strength to actively live out that love that you give us in the world. Holy One, we thank you for Jesus, the epitome and the example of your love. 
make us more like him mm. and sustain us in love by your Holy Spirit. Yes. Gracious God, we commit ourselves to your loving will yes. and we thank you for your unfailing love now yes. and always. Yes. Amen. Amen. And now let us receive, receive the benediction. May the love of God, the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the power of the Holy Spirit fill you with love. May you go out in the name of Christ to show that love to others, to show love for God and love for others always and everywhere. Go in peace to love and serve God and neighbor in all that you do. Amen. Amen. And thanks be to God. Amen. Amen.